Hello, everybody. I am live on Facebook right now, and I'm live on Instagram, so hello to everyone. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Stephanie Kay, and I am your host for episode number three of True Local TV, and I'm so excited to be talking with you guys today. Hello, everyone. You're already saying hi. We have already done two rockin', rockin' episodes of True Local TV, uh, and your feedback on it has been incredible. I had such a blast a few weeks ago at Hidden Root Farm showing you guys behind the scenes, the chickens and everything, uh, so I'm excited to bring you guys another episode today. So, uh, the best part of today's episode, as with every episode, is that during True Local TV, on these live, live episodes, we're going to be giving away a free box of meat. And today, I'm actually going to be giving away two free boxes of meat. So one to you guys on Facebook and one to you guys on Instagram. So all you need to do to enter for today is write a little comment, tell me where you're from, and that is it. And at the end of today's episode, I am going to pick a winner to give away a free box of meat. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. As per usual, I would love to win a free box a week, but me, but I'm happy to be the one that gives it away. So for today's episode, we wanted to do something a little bit different and something, hello, Courtney. Oh my God, Instagram is blowing up, you guys. This is so awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, Max joining, Irma's in here. Trish is on Facebook. You guys, this is so awesome. Tell me where you're from. I love this. So for today's episode, wanted to shift gears a little bit and kind of like take you guys into the kitchen. Well, I'm not totally going to cook for you guys, but talk about the different ways that you can use all of the amazing True Local products because they have so many different products, so many different cuts of all these different types of meats. And I want to show you guys or talk about the different ways that you can use these things because it's so easy to get stuck into a routine of chicken breasts and salmon fillets. Am I right or am I right? Tell me if I'm right, guys. Tell me if I'm right. If you are just tuning in, uh, say hello and tell me where you're from because in today's episode, someone is from Ottawa. I'm in Ottawa. Someone's from Waterloo. I love this. Right, leave me a comment and tell me where you're from because in today's episode, I am going to pick a winner for a free box of meat on Instagram and a free box of meat on Facebook. Guys, this is going to be epic. So before I dive into all of these different cups of meat and how you can use them in your own kitchen, what I want to talk about is give you a couple quick updates, and that is what are the new products that True Local has been bringing you. So. For our Ontario family, we've got something that I think, as a foodie and a nutritionist, is such a great addition to the True Local products, and that is pre-marinated, you heard that right, pre-marinated, pre-flavored chicken breasts. Everyone loves a quick and easy weeknight chicken dinner, but when you don't have time to cook, it can feel like a real project, right? Like, you're trying to get the sauces, the salt and pepper, all this different stuff. So True Local has already done the work for you. They've got chipotle mango, uh, lemon garlic, all of these different amazing flavors. So if you haven't already checked those out, go check those out and add those to your box because I'm pretty sure you're going to want them. And then for our, for our Ontario, for Alberta family, we are loving working with you guys so much. I need you to know that right now. So many new people working out, so many new amazing customers, love it so much. And we just keep on adding to our products in Alberta. So recently, just in time for the cold weather for fall, and I know it snowed out there, so you guys are gonna want this even more, is we've got some roast. We've got a prime rib ro roast, a sirloin tip roast. We've also got one of my personal favorites, which I'm gonna talk about today, is the pork shoulder, and the ever so popular bone broth. So Alberta fam, it's cold out there. I'm actually coming out there this weekend for Thanksgiving. It's snowy, you're gonna to wanna to check out these roasts. They are amazing. Yes, I can already see someone on Instagram. I missed your name, but she's loving the chipotle mango. What's up? Gave me that emoji. The chipotle mango uh, uh, chicken breasts. Uh, so love that as well. And then Patrick, what is up to you, Patrick, on Facebook? Guys, keep your hellos coming. And remember, if you just joined us, free box of me today. I'm giving one away, one on Facebook, one on Instagram. Just comment, tell me where you're from, and you will be entered to win. So without further ado, I've got hidden before me here. You can't really see it, but you're going to all of these different cuts of meat. So I want to talk about today all the different cuts of chicken that we offer, 
all of the different cuts of steak that we offer, the different cuts of pork, and how you can actually use these in the kitchen. Um, if you're not sure, you've only really cooked with one type of steak or one cut of chicken, the different versatile ways that you can use them. Yes, Sarah on Instagram is telling me how much she loves, loves the turkey bacon. I'm not gonna lie, that is good stuff. Okay, so in order to, we're gonna get started now, and I'm gonna start with the chicken, so excuse me for a moment. And what I wanna show you guys here is here I've got a plate of all of the different cuts of chicken. There we go, I'm gonna lose a boob. Oh, hello. Um, that your local offers as, and to Facebook, you guys can see those too. So arguably the skinless, boneless chicken breast is probably the most popular cut of chicken, right? I feel like that's what most people grab in the grocery store. It rose to popularity because it's real lean and it's high in protein, which we're gonna talk about after, but I want to make an argument that the all of these other cuts that I've got here are just as delicious and easy to cook. Someone's laughing at my boob comment. I mean, that is what it is, guys. Um, are just as easy to cook as the actual chicken breast. So up here compared to it, I'll just move it up a little bit. I've got the bone in skin on chicken breast. So it's essentially the exact same thing. It's just got the bone in and the skin on. It's what the name is, right? That's what it is. So the chicken breast is really easy to cook, but in my opinion, keeping the skin on and the bone in in all of the cuts, which we'll go through, helps to add another depth of flavor and also nutrition to the chicken breast. So yes, what it will do, the bone in, skin on version, is the bone is going to take a little bit longer to cook, so it's gonna add some time to your cooking time, but it also adds more flavor as well. So of course the chicken breast, you can just slice it up, throw it in the frying pan. A bone, you can't quite do the same thing, obviously, but roasting a chicken breast with a bone in, skin on, in the oven is a great way to do it. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it's going to give you an extra layer of flavor. And another really good way to cook the bone-in skin-on version is to do it on the barbecue. So I know barbecue season is coming to end, but if you've got a grill pan inside, or a grill pan that you wanna use on the stove top, using bone-in skin-on is amazing there. So those are the chicken breasts. Then we transition to chicken thighs. Um, which are very similar. We've got the boneless skinless version and then we've got the bone in skin on version. In my opinion, of all of the cuts of chicken that we offer, the thighs are a personal favorite. And the reason for that is, is because the thighs have a much even deeper texture, more deeper, more deeper, deeper texture than the chicken breast itself because it's got a bit more of that brown meat, which adds more flavor. Now, much like the skinless chicken breast, the skinless thigh is even thinner and it's even quicker to cook. So if you wanna cook it on its own, you could give it a quick grill on both sides, cooks really fast. I also love to do them under the broiler, they cook really quickly. Or if you wanna chop it up and throw it into a stir fry or a dish, a thigh is a really great, great way to do that. You can also cook it in combination with a breast, just so you have different bits of flavor in the meat that you're eating. The bone in skin on thigh, it's going to be similar to the chicken breast, but again, it has more of that brown meat, so deeper flavor. If you love a thigh, I love a thigh, a chicken thigh that is, um, a really great way to cook them is like the breast, is roast them in the oven, but in order to give a little bit of crispiness to the skin at the end, just pop the broiler on for a few minutes, give it a watch depending on your oven, and keeping it under the broiler will help to crisp up the skin, especially if you put a nice marinade on there, that tastes so good. And then the last three cuts I've got here that I can try and show you over here, we've got the full on leg, so the quarter chicken leg, the drumstick, and the wing. So if you love a good quarter chicken dinner, the quarter chicken, the leg here, is going to be the cut for you. So what that actually is, is a combination between the thigh and the drumstick. So you essentially get the best of both worlds. The leg is those two things before it was actually separated. So just like the bone and breast or the thigh, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook, but you are again going to get more flavor. You can grill it, you can roast it. Again, finishing it off in the broiler is a great way to do it. Uh, and then we've got the drumstick. The drumstick are great on the barbecue. I think the drumstick is a great place to add a lot of heavy flavor, something like a jerk seasoning or really heavy like a a peppery barbecue seasoning works really, really well on a drumstick. You can roast that or grill that, works really well. And then the last one that I've got here is the wing. 
I feel like everyone loves a good chicken wing, and I'm not gonna lie, the two local chicken wings are muy bueno. They are very, very good. So obviously the most common method that you would get at a gross, not a grocery store, rather, a restaurant, is that they would fry them, which you can certainly do at home, but if you want to do it a slightly healthier way, wings work really, really well in the oven, so get a big cookie sheet out, lay them all out, pop them in to bake them and allow them to actually cook. And then just before they've come to completely cooked, or even when they're completely cooked, what you can do is then pull them out, toss them in the sauce or the marinade that you want to um, eat them in, whatever, the barbecue sauce, or you make your own marinade, do it. And then again, you can put them back in the oven, turn the broiler on, let them crisp up, or you can take them to a grill and char them a little bit there. So, so many different options with all of these different cuts of chicken. The other thing that I didn't have on that, tr that tray there is if you really wanna get the most bang for your buck, you can also order the true local chicken, the whole chicken that we offer. So whether you're feeding a family or you're trying to meal prep for yourself, I mean, that is honestly the best way to get the most nutrition, the most bang for your financial buck, is to roast up a whole chicken and then divvy it up between meals. So you can use the cooked chicken and add it to stir fries, or you can put it in soups or stews or on salads. And it can seem intimidating to roast a whole chicken, but honestly, it's incredibly simple. So many amazing recipes to do that. You're just gonna pop it in the oven, walk away, let the oven do the work. It works out beautifully every, every single time. So those are some different ways that you can use some of the chicken cuts. So someone is saying that they're gonna have to try these wings in their next box. Guys, trust me, I'm not like a crazy wing gal, but these wings are legit. They work really well and you can do them in the oven. It's a really quick and easy and healthy way. Football season, I mean, why would you not want to try it, right? So, so many different ways to do the chicken. I'm just going to check some of the comments here on Facebook. Oh my God, so many of you guys saying hi. Hello, Dave. Hello, Lori. She loves chicken. I was with her a couple weeks ago. Hey, Lori, what's going on? So happy to have you on here. Um, okay, so the next, um, the next thing that we're going to move to is beef and the different cuts of steak. So I've got here on this little guy, I'll show you guys again. Hello to my Instagram peeps and then to my Facebook peeps too. We've got all of some different cuts of steak here. So we've got on here the filet mignon, it's very French, very fancy sounding. We've got the strip loin up here. And then these two here, this one here is a flank steak. And this one over here is a round steak. So I hope you guys can see that really well. Arguably, probably the um, most prized, if you will, cut, or the one that you'll see a lot in restaurants, is that filet mignon. And the reason for that is, is because it has that beautiful, melt-in-your-mouth, buttery taste and texture. So getting it in a restaurant, they do it perfectly every single time, right? But doing it at home, I assure you, is just as easy. The thing you want to do when you cook a filet mignon is not do too much to it because on its own, it's already so, so delicious. A little bit of salt and pepper, you put on, season on all sides, you're going to put that in a pan or a cast iron skillet would be even better. Sear it on both sides, put it in the oven for a few minutes, take it out medium rare. I like to do four minutes four minutes and then maybe two, two, three minutes in the oven and it comes out to that beautiful medium rare every single time. Obviously, if you prefer something a little more well done, you can leave it a little bit longer in the oven, but cooking a filet mignon at home is actually very easy. Sweet, delicious, buttery, melt in your mouth texture. And yes, we do. Someone's asking, do we have grass-fed beef? You bet your bottom dollar True Local has grass-fed beef. So you wanna check that out because you wanna make sure that you get that in your box. Okay, so that is the filet mignon here. Then I'm gonna jump up here to the strip loin. So it's for my Instagram peeps, it's the one up here over there. So this, this steak, I tend to think of it as like a jack of all trades. It does honestly whatever you want. You can just grill it on the barbecue or in a pan and eat it at its is if you're just looking for a straight up steak. Or if you're looking to grill it and then slice it up and put it on top of salads, you can also pre-slice it and then cook it. It makes, it works incredibly well in something like a stir fry or a beef and broccoli dish. A strip loin works really, really well for that. So it's kind of like the most versatile steak. As I said, jack of all trades, it does so many different things for you. So strip loins are really handy like that. 
You can also divvy them up, turn them into two portions if you feel like it's too big. It's a really beautiful steak. It goes a long way, and it's very, very versatile. And then the last two that I got here, sometimes more popular, but excuse me, sometimes less popular, but I would argue that there's so many awesome things that you can do with them. So this guy over here is the round steak, so a slightly different cut, maybe not as common. Of all of the ones I've got on the board here, it's going to be the toughest of all of them. So in order to help give it a little bit more of that, um, that soft texture, that marbleization uh, feeling and taste, is a round steak works really, really well marinated. So these guys, I tend to say, like, don't too much to them they're beautiful on their own a round steak if you've got a marinade you've got something you've got some some oil some garlic some herbs something that you want to let it sit in a round steak is going to work very very well for that just because it is a little bit texture tougher rather the texture is a little bit tougher so the marinade will help to break that down before you actually grill it and just simply grilling it is a really easy way to do it and then the last one I've got up here on the top of the board is the flank steak. So this one is great. Again, it's not as tough as the round steak, uh, but it's also very versatile, kind of like the strip loin steak. It also works very well when you marinate it, but the beauty of the flank steak is that it cooks so, so, so quickly. Like sear it, sear it, job done. You'll see it served a lot with things like chimichurri sauce, different like, uh, pesto-y, garlicky sauces like that. So that works very, very well. So if you're going for more of the straight up steak dinner, the filet mignon, the strip loin, if you're looking for something a bit more versatile, you want to put it in a stir fry on a salad, you want to add it to different dishes, trying something like a round steak or a flank steak, you're also going to get more bang for your buck uh, and they go a long way. Don't worry. It's fun to experiment with these different things. If you've never tried it, just add it to your box give it a go, see what happens. It's so fun to experiment in the kitchen and try tons of different things. So that is it for the steaks that I've got here. Guys, I'm gonna have a lot of steaks to cook after, aren't I? <laughs> Not complaining. Um, yes, someone is saying on Instagram that they love uh, flank steak and chimichurri. Honestly, if you've never tried flank steak and chimichurri, chimichurri is like an herby garlic olive oil sauce. You can make it at home really well. Try a flank steak with chimichurri you will love it. It is delicious. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and on Facebook, guys, what's going on? Uh, someone else is asking about the wings. I'm telling you, you love our products, Brenda. We appreciate that so very much. I love the products too, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so great. Welcome, Susan. Try the chicken legs, they're so good, so good. Okay, uh, next I wanna go on to pork without further ado if you will we're going to go to the pork and i've got four different cuts that i want to show you guys here uh brenda also loves her salmon i love our salmon too i'm not covering salmon today but if you haven't tried our salmon oh my gosh gorgeous okay so the next thing that we've got here is the pork i've got three of the cuts over here and then i'm going to show you the fourth one afterwards so Pork is probably somewhere between the middle of beef and steak in terms of leanness and the cuts. On, in pork, there's so many different cuts and so many different things that you can do with them. So I'm showing you guys four of the different ones today. One being the pork chop is this little guy that I've got down here. Then we've got the pork tenderloin is the one that I've got up here. And then I've got a set of ribs here, okay? So the pork tenderloin, I feel like a lot of people probably, excuse me, the pork chop rather, I feel like a lot of people probably grew up on the pork chop and maybe mom didn't do it so well, so you don't really love it. But trust me, the pork chop is a great cut of meat, especially what we've got here is this is boneless. So the beauty of that for weeknight dinner is that it cooks really, 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 really quickly. So kind of like think of it like a chicken breast as you will. You can cook it really quickly, you can grill it, you can bake it, you can roast it, you can do lots of different things with it, but it will cook very, very quickly. Again, a pork chop also takes on marinades and sauces very well, so if you wanna pre-marinate it, you can absolutely do that. The pork tenderloin is the big guy up here, is the most um, tender and moist and lean a cut of all of the different types of pork. If you're looking for some type of a roast dinner and you really want to impress, um, but you're not sold on your own skills in the kitchen, a pork tenderloin is the thing that you want to use because 
on a dinner table, it looks incredible. You get some potatoes, you get some veggies, and you roll up with a pork tenderloin, and no one will be the wiser of how easy they actually are to cook. In fact, they're so easy to cook that on a weeknight, you can get it done in under 30 minutes. Like 30 minute meal with pork tenderloin, they're also quite large, so you can easily serve a family or a group with one of them or make it for yourself. Again, then you can slice it up if you're just one person and use it for leftovers, for lunches, and all of these different things. Really easy to cook, really lean, really versatile. It's also important to keep in mind when you're looking at something like a pork chop and the pork tenderloin is you don't need to cook the life out of it, okay? So pro tip, if you're concerned about it, it's not quite like chicken in the sense that it needs to be fully, 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 fully cooked. You also don't wanna cook the life out of chicken, but you get what I'm saying, um, is that the pork can still have a little bit of that pinkish hue, so it's not so dry. So if you can get more comfortable with using the pork tenderloin, doing the chops, and just leaving them just lose a touch of pink, you're gonna get a lot better texture and flavor. A good way to do a pork tenderloin in order to get that is to sear it on all sides in a pan and then put it in the oven cuts down on the cooking time and that will also ensure that it's crispy on the outside while still being tender and melts in your mouth on the inside in the middle it's so so good and then the last one that I've got here are ribs so a lot of people will be thinking like I gotta have a big old southern meal if I'm gonna have ribs and no you don't have to. you can have ribs on a random Tuesday and it doesn't have to be a big a big hoopla you can have them whenever you want these do can seem intimidating to cook because they've got all these bones and all this gristle and you're not quite sure what to do with it but in reality they're really easy to cook so a little hack that's a great way to do them is you can just season your ribs simply with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, put them in the oven and let them bake. Then once they're actually cooked or like 95% cooked, you can take them out of the oven and then it's then at that point that you can add them to a grill pan or a barbecue and put your barbecue sauce or marinade or whatever you wanna to add to them onto them at that point once they're already cooked. As opposed to putting the sauce on before you bake them, they can dry out a little bit. So you add the moisture back by adding the sauce on the grill once they're baked. And honestly, ribs are super easy to cook, much like you would cook a bone in chicken breast, for example. They're gonna take a little bit longer than the chop or the loin, but it's worth the time because you're getting the depth of flavor and the nutrient density that's present in the bones, in, and around, in the meat that's in and around the bones is what I'm trying to say. So those are three, and then I've got one more. I told you that my personal favorite cut of pork was the pork shoulder, and this deserves its own plate because it ain't small. I mean, look at this guy, it's huge. Okay, so this is the pork shoulder that I've got right here. Um, the pork shoulder is actually technically like the pork butt, if you will, but if you love pulled pork, this is the cut that you want to do. It's Evidently quite big, but the beauty of that is it serves a crowd really, really easily, and it also makes tons of leftovers. Again, whether you're one person or you're four people or you're eight people, all of these different cuts can work for so many different people. Pork shoulder works really well in a slow cooker. So of all of these cuts, I would argue that that one works the best. If you want to put some salt and pepper on it, throw in some barbecue sauce, some tomato sauce, whatever it is that you like, the pork Pork shoulder works really well in there. You can kind of set it and forget it. Walk away and come back when it's cooked and it just starts falling apart. You can eat it on its own. You can make tacos. You can make carnitas. You can put it on salads. There's so many different things that you can do with it. You can also cook it as it is as is and just add flavoring afterwards it depends on what you want to do with it but don't be intimidated by those larger roasts or those larger cuts of meat honestly you're talking about bang for your buck how much it costs how far it can go those are the things that stretch so 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 far when it comes to all of the different cuts so okay i'm going to check out some of the questions and comments here uh kate kate likes that i had her at garlic guys if you want to do chicken that's pre-marinated like yeah that's what's up um okay hello bob the cod is also good amazing someone's mentioning the buffalo and that's the perfect segue to the next thing that i want to talk about because i've walked through chicken the steaks the different cuts of pork but the one that i've kind of left out with all of these different cuts is um, that in all of these different types of meat, we also have ground meats, right? Ground beef, 
ground chicken, ground pork, and then in addition to those three, we also have ground turkey, ground lamb, and ground buffalo. Now, I would argue probably the most common or the one that people would tend to order the most is really the ground beef, right? We know how to make burgers, we can make meatballs, we can make a lasagna, we can make a spaghetti sauce, and that's great. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with ordering, uh, ordering ground meat, adding that to your box. There's also so many other options that you can experiment with. So we've got ground meat, then we've got ground chicken and ground turkey. So these are, again, probably going to be the leanest cuts. So if you're looking for something like uh, lower in fat, that would be a cut that you wanna use, but they also have the potential to be the driest. But hold that for a second because I'm going to come back to that. They have the potential to be the driest, but they also are the leanest. So it really depends on how you want to use it and what you want to do with it. Um, and then the other things that we have are we have ground lamb and ground buffalo. So if you love red meat, but you've never tried ground buffalo or you've never tried ground lamb, I highly suggest that you do. Ground lamb is amazing if you want to take a dish and do a bit more of that Mediterranean, Middle Eastern flavors, you want to do lamb burgers, you want to do lamb koftas, you want to do anything in that department, some feta cheese, some tomato, some garlic, some onion. Ground lamb works really, really well for that. It's also slightly leaner than beef in some cases, so that can be really, really good. And then ground buffalo, if you love ground beef, you gotta get some ground buffalo. It's so lean, it's pasture raised, it is amazing. It's highly underrated, has a beautiful texture and beautiful flavor, and it's a really easy swap, rather, for places where you would put ground beef. So it's an easy transition for any of those things. Lamb, excuse me, buffalo or beef. If you wanna try something different, totally try the buffalo, it's absolutely beautiful. And then the last one that I didn't mention is the ground pork. So of all of these different cuts, pork is going to, uh, probably on be slightly of the fattier cuts or the flattier versions of ground beef, excuse me, ground meat. But what's really nice about the pork is not only does it work very well on its own, you can make great uh, meatballs out of it, put it in different sauces and dishes. But what's really nice about it is it pairs really well with other cuts. So if you want to use some ground turkey or some ground chicken, but you want to add a little bit of fattiness to it or a little bit deeper texture, ground pork works really, really well for that. So the point with all these ground meats is that there's so many different things that you can do with ground meat. You can make burger patties, you can make sauces, you can make stews, you can make koftas, you can put it into dishes, you can eat it on its own, just cooked ground, but experiment with all these different types because there's so many different types that we have why not give it a go, right? So you guys have been asking some really awesome questions. Hello, Susie, she got her first box. Uh, amazing. I love it. Uh, what do we got going on on Facebook? Guys, if you're just joining me, I need to remind you that I'm giving away a free box of meat and I'm going to be doing it momentarily. So if you have not yet just said hello and told, told me where you're from, do that because we're going to be giving away a free box of meat momentarily. So now that I've covered all of the different cuts and types and how you could potentially use them, and honestly, if you guys have an idea of how you use some of these different cuts, that I, how you use use bone and chicken thighs or how you use a flank steak or how you use your ribs or pork shoulder, please write in the comments because sharing is caring. Am I right or am I right? And you guys can probably teach each other a thing or two about how you use these different things. That's the beauty of cooking and of recipes that is all about sharing and you can learn so much stuff from so many different people. So the last thing is just a little myth that I want to bust for you guys. And I alluded to it a little bit when I was talking about the chicken. And that is the idea that the chicken breast, the boneless, skinless chicken breast is the healthiest cut of chicken. That's actually not quite true. Okay, so we've been told, it's been pounded into our heads for many, many years, that the boneless, skinless chicken breast is the healthiest cut. Um, that's really because it's the leanest and therefore, because it doesn't have a lot of fat, it is higher in protein. But the thing is, is that all of these cuts of chicken are highly nutritious. We talked about in episode number one, if you missed it, go back and check it out, how having fat in your diet is really important because 
Fat is what contains a lot of those fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. So incorporating more sources of natural, whole food, healthy sources of fat is really important. The other thing to think about is all of these different bone in cuts. So whether it's a bone in chicken breast or a bone in chicken thigh or the full leg or the wing or the drumstick is that the bones carry a lot of the nutrients in the actual chicken. So cooking meat with the bone in is going to give you a higher nutrient density in the actual meat. So whether you're just doing that in the grill or the oven and then you're eating the meat around it or whether you're cooking something with a bone in a stew or braising something or doing it in a soup and then once it cooked you can remove the bone, you're going to get a lot of that nutrient density going into the soup or the stew or whatever it might be. Also keep in mind to layer onto this, what has become very popular as of late? Well, that is bone broth. And that is because that again is where all of the nutrient density is. So if you want to use bone, if you want to explore bone in meats, I highly suggest it. And also make sure that you save your bones, put them in a bag, you put them in a container, leave them in the freezer, accumulate them. And then when you've got a bunch, you can make a beautiful stock or a beautiful broth or if you're buying a whole chicken, keep the carcass. That is money, guys. That is the good stuff. You want to make some broth out of that. So that's just a little myth that I wanted to end with today to remind you guys to kind of try different things, try different cuts. Don't be afraid to experiment. So many awesome things that you can try and taste. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give away a free box of meat to um, someone on Instagram and someone on Facebook. So bear with me, I'm gonna get real close to the screen for a second, because I gotta pick these winners. Okay, so on, I'm gonna do Facebook first. I'm gonna put this through. So on Facebook, the winner for our free box of meat is going to be Kim Viaus. Is that how you say your last name? I hope so. You are a winner for today. Congrats. You are getting a free box of meat delivered right to your door. Amazing. So much fun. So all you got to do in order to win is send us a message on Facebook and we'll get that right out to you. And then on good old Instagram, hold on one moment. Got it going on. Okay, I'm not sure how to say your name here, but I'm gonna go with you. It's Janaina Leonor. Yeah, okay, Janaina Leonor. You are the winner on Instagram, congrats. You just want a free box of meat. Again, just DM us, slide into the old DMs if you will, and send us a message, tell us where you're from, and we'll make sure that you, you give me the thumbs up, amazing. We'll make sure that you get that delivered to you guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to episode number three of True Local TV. We love your feedback, so keep your comments coming. If there's any topics that you want us to cover, please be sure to let us know because that is what we were we are here for. And we will be back in a couple of weeks with episode number four. And I'm going behind the scenes somewhere where you're going to want to join. So stay tuned for that. Until then, guys, get down with all these different cuts, experiment in the kitchen, and we will keep delivering this amazing stuff right to your door. Have a good day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.